Carla Brook can't catch a break. It should be mandatory for anyone thinking about becoming a bikey to read up on this guy's life. The patriarch of the WA Rebels has had a cop up his ass for more than 30 years. We're not going to go into the ins and outs of his run-ins with the constabulary because he's before the courts and even bikies deserve a fair trial. Although these two are probably working to close that loophole as I speak. Carl's latest alleged infraction involves 30 grand in cash and an amount of meth. Lawyer Michael Chidori says the drugs were scattered in the carpet of Carl's car and the police had vacuumed them up. Chidori claimed that far from being ill-gotten, the cash came from the sale of a vehicle. What do I do with her? Hmm? I sell her. And also the recent takings from a restaurant LeBrook runs in Osborne Park. And you thought Gordon Ramsay was a hard taskmaster. What the f*** did you put in that sauce? LeBrook is said to have been carrying the cash because he can't open a bank account. Chidori suggested the banks had been tipped off about Carl's OMCG status by a police informant. What do you think? Well, I don't think a police informant is tipping the banks off. I think the police are tipping the banks off. Uh-oh. Here comes trouble. Not that they need to. It's not like a branch manager at CBA has to do a lot of due diligence to work out who Carl LeBrook is or uncover his links to the underworld. He's not exactly trying to hide it. It's a lot of cash to be carting around. I assume that when you're a senior member of the Rebels Outlaw Motorcycle Gang, you probably have less of a chance of a robber tapping on your car window. I am the one who knocks. The flip side to that is you have more of a chance of it being a copper. Pull over! And that's why any aspiring one percenter should look up the term disproportionate minority contact before they patch up. DMC is usually applied to people of colour. If you're black or brown, there's a greater chance of you having some form of interaction with police, regardless of whether you're doing anything wrong. Either more likely to be pulled over in your car. Hey, what kind of work do you do? An individual of your particular ethnic persuasion? or have a homeowner ring the cops cause there's a suspicious looking person walking through the neighborhood. You and I both know that you don't exactly look like you belong in that neighborhood. Now, if a particular demographic is committing a crime at exactly the same rate as other demographics, but is more likely to get questioned and searched by the They're cops. They're more likely to get arrested. And more likely to go to court, more likely to get convicted, and more likely to go to jail. And once you've been to prison, your life opportunities shrink dramatically. It's your funeral, you dumb son of a bitch. You're less likely to get a decent job, which means you're more likely to commit a crime to get some more money. Same thing happens to bikers. It's hardly the same as being racially profiled, no, though. They sign up for it. And I'm not saying outlaws have the same likelihood of being criminal as the rest of us. Clearly, that's not the case. <laughs> The clue there is the word outlaw. But think about this scenario. A cop pulls you over because you've got a broken tail light and he or she plugs your driver's license into the system and comes up with CCOMCG or GJOMCG or CDOMCG. All of a sudden, your car's getting searched. Which means even if you have only the average chance of an average amount of meth being in the carpet of your car, you're far more likely to have said meth discovered and put in an evidence bag. Do you reckon the cops are going to go to the trouble of getting the dustbuster out if they pull you or me off? Well, not me. Because you're not red flagged. Because you're not a bikey like Carl. So that's the life you're signing up to if you want to get patched. Good luck. If you do anything wrong, you are wildly more likely to be busted for it. And even if you're a clean skin, you're gonna do something wrong at some point because all young blokes do. Come on, here we go! The difference between the 1%ers and the 99%ers is 99%ers don't have a dedicated police squad following us around waiting for us to f up. And when you get charged over that f up, the judiciary isn't going to be terribly sympathetic to your cause. You're an idiot! Being a bikey is worth a premium on whatever sentence you would ordinarily get for the fuck up. At least you get protection on the inside. Now, the law of disproportionate minority contact doesn't end at the front gates of Hakia. It follows you in. You're more likely to have your cell tossed if you're OMCG. Which means even if you have a below average amount of contraband, you've got an above average chance of it getting found. Can't say I approve of this. 
which means a below average chance of getting parole. It feels like Philip Lowe's let us out on parole. Yeah. Ten consecutive rate rises, he's finally hit pause. I suspect Lowe's worked out that there's a link between this headline and this one, which is why we've just got this one. But inflation's still too high. So why has he stopped now? What's he waiting for? Might be the interest rate lag effect. It takes punters a good few months to adjust spending patterns once rates have risen. Keep up. The turning point is usually when people suddenly realise there's nothing left in the offset account. Help me, I'm poor. Lowe is sailing in uncharted territory at the moment. No RBA governor has ever tinkered with interest rates when mortgage holders owe so much money, which means every rate move is magnified. And no governor has ever presided at a time when more Australians are mortgage free. They've got no debt. The last time the RBA raised rates this fast, 11% of the population was retired. That's now at 17%. Every time Phil raises rates, they make his job harder by spending more, by booking another cruise or buying a bigger caravan. Custom designed climate controlled motor coach. Jack calls it the highlight of our twilight. Because they've got term deposits that are now paying 5% instead of the 1% they were getting a year ago. It's happy days for anybody with cash. Well, almost anyone. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.